Okay, so this is part two of dimensional analysis, and this is where I'm going to show you the real strength of this tool. So for one-step problems, I mean, honestly, you probably know other ways to convert the units that might be just as easy for you. But in unit six, when we do stoichiometry, we're going to do problems that have three and four steps sometimes. And so I'm going to show you how to use dimensional analysis to do multi-step conversions, because this is where it's going to be really helpful to you. So we're going to start with something very familiar, which is a metric conversion. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to convert five kilometers to centimeters. Now, I know some of you are thinking, I still don't need dimensional analysis for this, and that's fine. Again, I'm just using this as a tool. All right, so I'm going to start by identifying what I'm given and figuring out where I'm going. All right, so what I'm given is five kilometers. We have a big space, and I'm converting to centimeters. More space to write my final answer. All right, now. I might be able to figure out a direct conversion from kilometers to centimeters, but it's a lot easier to go through meters because those are very familiar conversions. So I'm going to take my upstairs unit and move it down. And I'm going to say, OK, what can I easily convert kilometers to? Well, I can easily convert kilometers to meters. I have a conversion factor for it right there. OK, now I know from this conversion factor that for every one kilometer, there are a thousand meters. Now, kilometers cancel out, and now I have meters. But that's not what I'm trying to find in the end. So since I haven't gotten to my final destination yet, I'm just going to draw another line and keep going. Take my upstairs unit and move it down. What can I easily convert meters to? Oops, that should be 100. I can easily convert meters to centimeters. Okay? And I know from this conversion factor that for every one meter, there are 100 centimeters. Okay? So then it's simply a matter of, since my meters have canceled out and I'm left with the unit I want, of doing my calculations. So five, five times 1,000 times 100. So when you do that, you would get 500,000 centimeters. And it's also fine to do this in scientific notation if you prefer that, OK? Um, but again, you're much less likely to make a mistake when you do your work out like this. People have a tendency when they do it in their head or just on their calculator to make some mistakes. So I'm going to show you another example, and this is a completely ridiculous example. And imagine that we live in a dystopian future where we have a fruit-based economy and we're trading fruit for each other based on these conversion factors. Okay, so. In this fake fruit economy, I have these conversion factors, and I have a bunch of oranges, 30 to be exact, and I want pineapples because pineapples are better than oranges. Oh boy, and there's a sound. Thank you. Um, so you can tell I'm back at school recording this. Um, all right, so I'm going to start by writing what I'm given. I have 30 oranges, and I want pineapples. I'm going to abbreviate those a little bit to save myself space. Okay, now. I'm going to take my upstairs unit and move it down. And then I'm going to look at my conversion factors and say, OK, what can I convert to? All right, so oranges, I can convert to pears. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get to pineapples yet, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going step by step until I get to my answer. So based on this conversion factor, I know that I have four oranges for every five pears. OK? Now, oranges cancel out, and I'm left with pears. That's not what I want in the end, so I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to take pears and move them down. And what can I convert pears to? Well, I can convert pears to lemons. Okay, I know that I get one pear for every two lemons. And finally, I can convert lemons to pineapples. Okay, there are three lemons for every two pineapples. So I'm left with pineapples. Then I'm going to multiply everything across the top. So that'll give me 600 divided by 12. So that should be 50 pineapples. 30 times 5 times 2 times 2 divided by 4 divided by 1 divided by 3, okay? So the advantage of this method here is that it allows me to go step by step and not necessarily have the whole thing planned out. So this allowed me to organize my work. Could you have done this without dimensional analysis? Maybe, but this certainly made it a lot easier to figure out how to solve the problem. So now I want you to try a couple of multi-step problems and see how those go.